You would think attachments would be pretty straightforward and in some ways they are. Extendos give you more bullets and recoil groups make your guns easier to manage. But if you feel like that pen mod you put in your gun isn't really doing anything, well, I'm here to tell you. No, 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 no. Well, yes. Today we're going into detail on ammo converters, aka pen mods. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how you can get two purple SMGs for the price of one. If you like these kind of videos, I invite you to check out my channel and subscribe if you like what you see. And if there are any changes to the game that happen after this video is published, I'll leave a pinned comment down below. Now let's get to it. For the sake of new players, I'm going to do a very quick damage slash pen explanation so we're all on the same page. Every weapon, even grenades, has a damage value and a penetration value. Whenever dealing damage to the armor, you compare your pen value to the armor value. If they match, the base damage of the weapon is inflicted. If they don't match, the damage of the weapon can be reduced or increased if the difference is significant enough. Depending on where you hit, there may be multipliers to increase or reduce the damage. Done. Okay, so now without getting into the voodoo formula that Jaeger uses to calculate this, not all pen value increases are going to result in increased damage. Sometimes the threshold for getting that extra point of damage is only one to three points of pen increase away. Other times it's well beyond five and no pen mod is able to do anything about that. And not all damage increases are going to result in faster kills because you'll still need the same amount of shots. So slapping on a pen mod isn't just going to automatically change the nature of your fights unless you use the right ones on the right gun I guess the right armor. Complicated, I know, but I'm going to show you where the power spikes are so you can more easily take advantage of the mods that you have. I'm going to spend a little extra time on the first two examples just to help illustrate my points. This way, I can breeze through the rest of them. Starting off with the easiest to showcase, the bolt action and the scrapper. With heavy ammo, we're dealing with low rates of fire, so the key metric you want to focus on is shots to kill. The one to two points of extra damage doesn't really mean much unless it translates into a tangible difference in your ability to kill somebody. The bolt action, without any pen mods, can two tap great armor to the body. It can two tap green armor, but only if one of those shots is to the head, but adding a green pen mod will now allow you to do the same to blue armor. Any mod above this doesn't do anything meaningful, so that's best safe for something else. That's a straightforward cut and dry example, but it's a little different when you're dealing with automatic weapons. We'll value the increased damage per shot a little bit more than with non-automatic weapons. While many times it's not as dramatic as decreasing the shots to kill, it is still useful in a fight. Now if you're doing things right, the fight isn't coming down to a 50-50 DPS race. You're more likely trading damage trying to get an advantage. In a trade, you could be landing 4-5 to five shots which now now leads to four to five extra damage. When they try to heal it up, they may need one extra med to fully heal it up. So if there's pressure being applied, they will have to decide between engaging with less HP or if they have the four seconds needed to top it off. With those extra four seconds, you have some options to utilize. Grenades, flanks, reloading, pushing, etc. If they don't have that time, the next trade might end up killing them because of that remaining unhealed damage. This is especially true with duos and trios when you get a mix of damage sources. Now the scrapper is a good example to showcase how pen mods can work greatly, but also do nothing at the same time. Putting on a green pen mod on the scrapper increases your damage per shot by 1 against gray and purple armor. You are already doing 12 damage to grays and now you're doing 13, but you are only hitting purple for 8 and it brings it back up to 9. While it does decrease the shots to kill by 1 on both, against grays that's not really that meaningful. Against purple however, bringing it down from 13 to 12 shots is going to be meaningful in that kind of a fight. Notice though that it does nothing against green and blue armor. So consider if you're running a scrapper, what are the odds of you running as purple armor as opposed to blue and green? That's up to you in regards to you knowing your lobbies. Now the blue pen mod however gives you an additional damage point against green armor which also reduces its shots to kill. This weapon gets a lot of value with pen mods in that every increase results in a faster time to kill provided it's against the right armor. The purple pen mod doesn't do anything meaningful and if you notice not a single pen mod on this gun affects its ability to kill blue armor. So some quick thoughts on all this information. If the scrapper is your primary and you're running into mostly blues don't bother with the pen mod. However if you're rolling with higher gear and coming into contact with purples having this weapon as a sidearm with a green pen mod could be beneficial. Also consider that since you can't craft blue mods, in some way they become more valuable than purples, especially on weapons where there are no meaningful differences between the two, which are actually most weapons. Okay, so now that we've gone over what to look for, let's breeze through the rest of the weapons. On the screen will be the weapons and the mods that give them benefits against what armor. If it's not listed, there's no meaningful benefit. With this information, you should now get an idea what weapons you should be really be focusing on on which mods. While this is showing, I'll go over issues with the Phasic Lancer, the Gorgon, and the Shotguns in general, and why I chose not to list them. All of these weapons suffer from general burst weapons weapon issues. Shotguns are low fire burst weapons and the increased damage often makes no difference as it's hard to quantify its effectiveness of the pen mods. Because you have multiple pellets hitting multiple points on the player, they have various multipliers and some that will straight up miss, so you're only getting partial hits. The Gorgon can two beam every armor type. The question really comes down to how much of that beam you're allowed to miss before being required to fire a third beam. So again, this weapon makes it really hard to quantify the effect of a pen mod having on its damage output. The Phasic Lancer is a little easier to quantify. With the green pen mod, you are now capable of three burst 
bursting purple, that's only if every single shot from all three bursts land. And that's where it gets a little tricky because the damage becomes variable based on how many times you have to pull the trigger, which can be based on how many of the three rounds per burst hits the target. The blue pen mod adds some value against blue armor and purple adds more benefits to all the other armor. But honestly, it comes down to how many rounds of that burst are going to connect. Just a personal tip, if you're close enough to be able to land all three rounds per burst, you should be aiming for the head. Okay, so now I'll show you how to get two purple SMGs for the price of one. For the cost of a scrapper, crafting an autoloader, crafting a purple pen mod, and then crafting an extended magazine, you now have an SMG that is just as good as a purple flechette in the vast majority of PvP situations. If you account for the price of ammo as well, you can see on the screen that the cost in both K-Marks and scripts are significantly lower. It gets even cheaper if you only have a blue pen mod because the results are the same. You may require an extra shot to kill purple and exotic armor, but the fire rate difference means that by the time you get to the last shot, the time to kill is either exact or favors the scrapper. The cost advantage isn't the only thing to account for as well. The sound the scrapper gives off will leave players believing you're lower in effectiveness than you actually are. And if you're on Bright Sands, your gear score is drastically lower. If you're looking for more guides or just PvP videos, check these out. And if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.